Good morning. Uh, we're going to continue doing perturbation theory today. Uh, we'll finish doing uh, non-degenerate perturbation theory and then turn to degenerate perturbation theory as well. We had computed um, already the first order corrections to the states, first order corrections to the energy, and second order correction to the energy. So here in these formulas that I've written um, are all the results we have so far. And the useful thing is to ask yourself whether you know what every symbol here means. This is the state, which is the deformation of the original state N0 of the Hamiltonian H0. We had a Hamiltonian H of lambda, which was equal to H0 plus lambda delta H. And N0 was an eigenstate of H0 with energy En0. And we found that as you turn on lambda, lambda becomes non-zero, the energies change, the state, the eigenstate changes. And uh, here is lambda, or first order in lambda, second order in lambda. We didn't compute the state to second order in lambda. Moreover, we have this symbol delta HKN that was defined to be the matrix element on the unperturbed eigenstates of the operator delta H. So that's another symbol in here. We're summing over all states in the spectrum except for the state N here because the denominator here would give you a zero and this would be problematic in general. So that was what we derived and these are the formulas we have. It's worth making a few remarks as to what we see from these formulas because they're a little complicated and uh, you may not have uh, immediate intuition about it. So, a few remarks. Remarks. And the first one concern, in fact, both remarks uh, that I'm gonna make concern the behavior of the energy as represented by this formula. First remark is that if you were to look at the ground state energy of the system, the first two terms here, so for n equals zero, if we call the ground state uh, by the label n equals zero, for the state n equals zero, these first two terms on the energy overestimate the ground state energy. They always give you more than what the true ground state energy is for any value of lambda. That is kind of uh, plausible, given that you see here that for the ground state energy, when n is equal to zero, and it's the lowest energy state, these differences are all positive. All these states have more energy. Therefore, this term is negative. And the next correction to order lambda squared tends to lower the energy of the ground state. So, so the claim is that the first uh, v order lambda result, no, the order al, al lambda energy, ground state energy, overestimates the true ground state energy. And so how do we see that? So we consider E zero, because we're doing N equals zero. This is the ground state. We start labeling with N equals zero sometimes. Uh, zero plus lambda H zero zero. That is the order lambda estimate 
for the ground state energy. The first term can be viewed as the expectation value of the original Hamiltonian on the ground state. That is E0 because this H0 on 0 is E0, 0. So this is E0, 0 plus lambda. And we also know that, I'm, I'm sorry, here I made a little mistake. That should be delta. Lambda delta H zero zero plus lambda the expectation value of delta H on the same state. So these two things together are nothing but the expectation value on the ground state of H0 plus lambda delta H. That's kind of nice, isn't it? Uh, that uh, these two terms really are nothing else but the expectation value on the ground state of this thing that we called H of lambda. And now comes the variational principle that says that if you evaluate the Hamiltonian on an arbitrary state, the expectation value of the Hamiltonian on an arbitrary state, you get more energy than the ground state energy of the system. You always get more. And when you hit the ground state, you get the lowest value. So look at that. This is the Hamiltonian. And this is the unperturbed ground state. This is not the real ground state. The real ground state is what we're trying to find. So this is like saying, OK, you're evaluating the exact Hamiltonian on some arbitrary state. Therefore, this is greater than or equal to the true ground state energy that we would call E0 lambda true ground state energy, which in that notation indeed is E0 lambda. So that's a, a nice result. And it matches with the idea that for the ground state, ground state, the order lambda squared correction is minus lambda squared, the sum over k different from 0, delta h k 0 squared over e k minus e 0, 0. And this thing, as we mentioned, the numerator is positive, the denominator is positive, because this was the ground state. And uh, this is a non-degenerate ground state. And um, k, therefore, has more energy here, ek0. So everything is positive. So this is negative. And is negative. So actually, here, there is a generalization of this observation. And you can imagine that you have now a particular state, n, here. Then you have all these states that are above and all these states that are below. So let's look at the second order correction to the energy of the state En. The second order correction. The first order correction shifts. The energy is proportional to delta H and N. But the second order correction is minus lambda squared 
the sum over k different from n. So let's split it. k greater than n, and we'll write the same thing, h k n squared over e k zero minus e n zero. And then I want to write the other states, the states where k is less than n. But let me do one thing here. On those states, I'll switch the order of the sum. I'll put e n 0, the order of the sign in the denominator, e k 0, and change the sign here. So these two changes of sign are correlated. I change the sign in the denominator, and I change the sign in front. And now we see the following. All these states that are above n, k is greater than n. This difference is positive. This is manifestly positive. This is negative. So these states are kind of pushing your state down. The effect of these states on top is a negative correction, or pushing the states down. On the other hand, the lower states, the states with k less than n, again, I've ordered it now conveniently. All the states k now have less energy, so this is positive, this is positive, this is positive, so these states over here, are actually pushing that state up. So the upper states are pushing it down. The lower states are pushing it up. This is usually referred to as level repulsion. The levels repel each other. The upper states don't want the state end to go close to them. The lower states don't want them to go close to them either. So it's a nice dynamic that helps you understand what's going on here. Another point we want to make has to do with the validity of this expansion. So when, in general, when you have serious expansions, the issues of convergence are delicate. So we, we can get a lot of insight just by doing an example. So let me talk about the validity of the perturbation. Series. This is supposed to give us some insight. One thing we've said is that we think uh, delta gamma lambda, I'm sorry, delta H is supposed to be smaller than H0. Now, these are operators, so the statement that they're smaller has to be made more precise. Like, what is the size of an operator? And you could think, well, we could say the entries of the matrix elements should be much smaller, and that is true, but it's not enough. For that, let's consider an example. So this will be a two by two matrix Hamiltonian in which H of lambda will be given by some H zero plus lambda uh, V hat, which will be E one zero, E two zero plus lambda. That V hat matrix will be of the form V, V star. It must be Hermitian. So V is a number. V star is the complex conjugate. These are the two energies. Those. Because the Hamiltonian is known, each time we talk about the Hamiltonian that is known, we write it as a diagonal matrix, where we're saying, yes, that is the matrix elements of the Hamiltonian in the basis of eigenstates, which we know. So a known Hamiltonian you can represent uh, by a diagonal matrix. So here is our whole matrix H of lambda. E. 
And uh, you could say, all right, uh, our perturbation theory, practically speaking, is these formulas that allow us to compute the eigenvalues of these matrices, which are of this matrix, which is the energies of the system, of the eigenstates, and compute the eigenstates. For H0, these are the eigenvalues, and the eigenstates are 1, 0, and 0, 1. So perturbation theory is really, you can think in terms of Hamiltonians, but also you can think of it in terms of matrices. It's allowing you to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of these matrices. So let's, this is a two by two matrix with numbers. You know how to compute the eigenvalues, so I'll give you the answer. The eigenvalues, E plus minus, are E1 plus E2 over two, plus minus E1 minus E2 over 2 times the square root of 1 plus lambda squared absolute value of V2 squared E1 minus E2 over 2 squared. Long formula. That's it. Those are the exact things. If you wanted to see this as a result in perturbation theory, you would say, well, lambda squared uh, v squared or lambda v is small, and I'm going to think of this term as small, and I'm going to expand this square root. And if I expand this square root, I'm going to get all kinds of terms with different powers of lambda. You can also see there that um, there's no energy correction linear in lambda, because when you expand the 1 plus epsilon square root, it's roughly 1 plus epsilon over 2 plus dot dot. And therefore, when you expand the square root, the first correction is going to be proportional to uh, lambda squared. And that actually conforms to that because the matrix elements of the Hamiltonian, delta H, N, N, along the diagonals uh, for the perturbation are zero. So there is no order lambda correction. So what do you do here then? You must do this expansion. And here I write the relevant series, f of z, if you define it as 1 plus z squared, is equal 1 plus z squared over 2 minus z fourth over 8 plus z 6 over 6, and it's not that simple after that, minus 5 over 128 z to the 8 plus order z to the 10. So that's this perturbative series expansion that you would use here. And uh, how good is the convergence of this series? Well, it, it's OK. It, uh, it's something that uh, when you study complex analysis, you see this function 1 plus square root of z squared has branch cuts at i and at minus i in the complex plane, in the z complex plane, those are the branch cuts. Uh, these are the places where this square root becomes 0, and you have to deal with them. And uh, the function is convergent only up to here. There is a radius of convergence. The radius of convergence is 1. You can try it with a Mathematica or with a program and see it take 30 terms, 40 terms, and you will see that as long as you take a point z here, it converges. You take a point a little bit out, it blows up the series. So it has a radius of convergence. 
That's not so bad. Uh, radius of convergence is okay, but basically we need uh, z to be small, which corresponds here to the statement that lambda v, z, small for a fast convergence corresponds to lambda v, absolute value, being smaller than E1, 0, minus E2, 0, absolute value over 2. Roughly smaller. And now we see that the thing that matters for a perturbation series to be good is also that the perturbation be small compared with the energy differences. Not just it should be small, the perturbation. It should be small compared with the energy difference. So if you have a Hamiltonian with a state of energy 100 and a state of energy 101, you might say, well, if I take a perturbation of size 2 or 3, that's very small compared to the energies. But it's not com small compared to the difference of energies. And that can cause the perturbation expansion to go wrong. So this gives you extra insight that, in fact, being a small perturbation not only means small compared to the energies, but also small compared with the energy differences. Something that you see here as well, energy differences are controlling things. And if the energy differences are, if the perturbation is not small compared to energy differences, then uh, these ratios can be rather large, and uh, the perturbation terms are very large, and uh, nothing is very simple. So uh, that's what I wanted to say about uh, the convergence of a perturbation expansion. More rigorous statements can be made, but we're not going to try to make them here. <laughs>